Today is communion Sunday, so we are going to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to verse 32. So starting verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread and or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. So during communion, we are commanded to do one thing. Take this bread and drink this cup in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus commands us to remember him, which is the salvation that he had achieved and provided for us. Sometimes if we study the Bible, we are kind of distracted by all the other theology, all the other miraculous signs, all the other healing provision that Jesus had provided for us. But then Jesus commands us to only remember him in reference to the salvation that he had achieved for us. Why? Because that is the purpose of him coming to this world to demonstrate to us that he is the son of God, he is the son of man, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. And so this is so important that Jesus did not command us to remember him healing us, remember him, you know, resurrecting the dead, but to remember him because he had done the will of his father on earth submit himself unto the will of god a hundred percent even to the point that he is he was unwilling to take the cup but then he still pray in that prayer that not my will but your will be done father jesus is the perfect example for all christians to learn and follow and this is why we need to remember Jesus for the salvation that he had provided for us. Because without the salvation, we would not receive the new life from God and we would not be able to live according and in the will of God the Father in heaven. This is why we have communion every single month. Because this is a great reminder for all Christians to start doing one thing that Paul emphasized in this passage, and that is you ought to examine yourself before taking the cup and the bread of the Lord. This is so important to the point that we as Christians should be often doing. Because without true repentance, I don't know what and who we are following. And I don't care if you claim that you are a Christian for God knows how many years, if your life never show any true repentance, any true actions that you are turning your life around, back to the will of God, back to the word of God, then all those years that you claim to be a Christian meant absolutely nothing to God and absolutely nothing to yourself and absolutely nothing unto the entire world. 
And some of us may find that, well, what does it mean for me to repent? I thought Jesus already forgive us. What is it that we need to do? When the time we claim that we believe in Jesus Christ, we literally proclaim that we have the truth in us. We have the life in us. We have the only one thing that the entire world does not offer, and that is salvation, and that is new life in God. And so. With that new life, we can totally live according to what the Word of God said that we can do. And so, without repenting of our own ways, and for example, just prioritizing our lives, what priority are you going to prioritize your life today? Is it the will of God? Is it the kingdom of God? Or is it still your work schedule? Is it still whatever you find that is important to you and that occupy the top priority, and you would tend to those matter before you worship your God today? That's one simple example, but we also often overlook. Well, is that a sin? Is my work schedule something that is not right? No, work is all fine, as you can find in the book of Genesis. God did not create man to just chill in the Garden of Eden, but to manage everything that God had created. So work is part of our lives, but then, as long as work completely owns you, and that you find that you always tend to the matter in your work, and not the word of God, then. That becomes a problem. So don't blame the work, but examine yourself. Why you would tend to the work before you tend to the word of God? Why would you not worship your God simply because He is your God? Did you not realize that He is God? Did you not realize that He is the Lord of Lords, God of Gods, and King of Kings? Did you not realize that you should be worshiping God every single day before you tend to other matters? So it is actually our attitude that make the neutral things evil. Work in and of itself should not be a matter. But then, when the time we, you know, polluted the work, then that would become a problem. So for us to repent, we need to find out what is supposed to be like according to the Bible, according to what Jesus has shown us, and to all the Christians, my brothers and sisters who serve in ministry, you would see one really interesting thing that Jesus has done and recorded in the Gospel. When all the people rushing to the ministry of Jesus. Sometimes, Jesus just disappeared, and to do what? To pray, to get close to God the Father, to ask for His direction, to ask for His guidance, to spend time worshiping God the Father. But today, us as the servant of God, when when the time we tend to the ministry, we focus on the ministry itself, not God Himself. And so, so many brothers and sisters, you know, serve to the point that they all got burnt out. So, is the ministry evil? No, it is us forgetting what is the most important part of the ministry of Jesus Christ was, and that is His salvation for us. The relationship with God the Father is the most important thing, matter to Jesus. Remember what Jesus said on the cross, "Why, Father, you forsake me." His relationship with God the Father was the most important thing in the Son of God's life. But today we are crowded with all the other things, and that this 
kind of left out. And that's why when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, is to take us back into the most important thing in our lives, and that is our relationship with God the Father. And when the time we claim that we have that relationship, we got to examine ourselves to see if every part of our lives actually align with this single most important principle that you can find in the Bible. And that's why repentance is so important. But then one other thing on top of the repentance is that actions always speaks louder than all the philosophy and theology that you can come up with from the Word of God. Actions matters a lot more in front of our God. If you claim, if you claim that I study everything, but your life does not strike a balance, does not reveal what you claim in your theology, it meant nothing. It's just a theory. It does nothing. And today, you know what's lacking? It's not the knowledge of God. It's not the knowledge of the Word of God. If you go to any seminary uh, library, you would find tons of theo theological books for you to read. So the knowledge of God is not lacking today. Once again, it's our commitment unto the Word of God that is lacking today. I've heard so many brothers and sisters claim that we need to repent, but then one year later, they are still in the same pit. They're still in the same way of living. Then what is that? What is, what is it that they follow when the time they claim that they are the Christians, they are the follower of Jesus Christ? They did not follow God, they just swing right back into their own lives and follow themselves once again. And that's why Paul emphasized that when the time you are about to take the cup and the bread, you got to examine yourselves. See if anything that does not align with the Bible, then you ought to repent. Today, there are so many issues in the world, you know, politics, economy, substance abuse, discriminations, you name it, we have it. And we got so many slogans saying that we should stop this, we should stop that. As much as I, I support all those slogans, but I urge that Christians, there is one thing that is so important for you to do in order to reach to the will of God and transform the entire world. And that one simple step is to first transform yourself unto the Word of God. And without doing this, everything that we claim, theology, Bible study, would just be something on theory. If our lives are not transformed, it doesn't matter what kind of catchy slogan that we can come up with, it will still go in vain simply because there is no power of God in us. And so today I urge that you will examine yourselves. Examine your own life to see, to really check if I am following Jesus Christ or not. Do I own up to my life and hold 100% responsible in front of God and 100% willing to repent, to change, to change to the direction of God, to change to the righteousness of God, so that when the time your life is transformed, you can pray and with the power of the Holy Spirit, transform the people around you and unto the whole community and unto the whole state and unto the entire country. And without starting by yourselves first, but then you want to point fingers to other people should start first. Well, 
Remember what Jesus said unto the Pharisee? No. If you do not know what I'm referring to, just go to bo the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter 23. But then if you know what I mean, well, we got to start in our own lives. Because as Jesus claimed, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. So did you go to that way? The way of Jesus Christ. If you do, pray and may the Holy Spirit guide you to fulfill the will of God in your life. And may you empower by the Holy Spirit to achieve what God has reserved for you. And if you find that, oh, I never go to that way that Jesus point me to. Well, I pray that you will bow down right now, ask for forgiveness and ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help you transform in the Word of God. Because without that, your worship meant nothing. You're not even worshiping God. You're not even following God. You are right there battling against God, still fighting for that one top priority in your life and that you are just fooling yourself. So I pray that you will examine your life. And if the Holy Spirit convicts you, I pray that you have the courage and the humbleness to just bow down and confess. And may the Holy Spirit empower you to follow the will of God in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. And as we take the cup and the bread, Father, may your Holy Spirit speak to us directly in our heart. Help us to repent. Help us to examine our lives. Help us to examine our mentality, our commitment unto you so that we know how to follow you. And so, Father, forgive us if we have any weakness in our lives, if we still have hidden sins, hidden life that is a shame to reveal unto anyone, Father, I pray that you will release us from that bondage, from that addiction, from that pride that we feel like we can hold everything together and we keep everything in control. So, Father, may your Holy Spirit grant us your new life so that we live in your will and in your word. And so, Father, help us to follow you. Help us to repent. And Father, thank you very much for your grace and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.